Hey everybody, praise the Lord, good evening to you. Man, praise the Lord, today's Resurrection Day. On the uh, 360 day prophetic calendar. Amen. We got our dates right. And the Lord squared it right up with Sean. Said, dude, you got it. You nailed it. And so now the 365 day, which we refer to as the Jewish calendar, but they are actually on the synagogue of Satan calendar. The real Jewish calendar, God's calendar, 365 day calendar is bam been perfected been calibrated and now it's 43 to 45 days slower than the one they celebrate so they're way ahead and so they always get to these quote unquote feasts and they're not the feast of the lord it's not the timing of the lord everything's off so god has commissioned sean to get it right he's his watchmaker and he's fixed the clock man fix that clock for us and so now those of you who by faith are following this ministry, you're on the right time. You're on the right clock. And we encourage all of you to believe this. We encourage you to believe and believe with all of your heart what God's doing. All right? What he's doing through his word, what he's doing through his man, uh, the namesake of the seven thunders. When we just read the plain text of John, we see the seven thunders. He saw, behold, the seven thunders. He was ready to write, and God said, don't. But now we have a name applied to it. Sean Mitchell, Sean Moses Mitchell. This is the book of him. These are the seven thunders that he brought forth. And six of them are complete. And I don't know how many of them might be of the seven, but we got six of them complete. We waited for six, boy, and we got them and we're blessed to have them. Heather says, happy resurrection day, family. Happy resurrection day, guys. Woo. Praise the Lord. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. So next Monday, is when we begin counting the 50 days to the week in the prophetic calendar. And that lands the day after Jesus' birthday. So wouldn't that be an interesting night from the 29th into September 30th? You know, some nightfall action or something like that. Wouldn't that be interesting? Praise God. So we want you saved, guys. You got to be saved. You got to be saved. And the only way to be saved is with God's righteousness. None of your own, none of your help, none, your help, guys. Have you ever had a four-year-old try to help you on a project? Now, come on, mom. Is that really a help? Huh? That's you trying to help Jesus save you. You're only in the way and you ain't saving nothing, man. You're wrecking everything. So why don't you step out of the way and let Jesus do his work? It is his work to save you. It is his work to make you righteous. It was his work on the cross that we believe in. And when you believe in that work, his death, burial, and resurrection, the resurrection's today, man, praise God. And when you place your faith there, the only way I'm getting to heaven is Jesus. The only way I'm getting to heaven is his death, burial, and resurrection. The only way I'm getting to heaven is understanding that he paid my price in full. He paid my ticket to heaven. And he did all the work. He paid all the price. The cost was all his. It's free to me, and it's free to you if you'll believe. Everybody, everybody's default is hell. And the preacher comes along and tells you this story. It's a great story. It's the gospel, good news. And you believe that story, and you apply that story. You believe it. You believe that story, and you make it your story. And whosoever believeth in him in that story, you shall be saved. And God himself will infuse you with his perfection, his righteousness. And he takes all your sin upon him. That's why Jesus died. Because all when he came to the cross, even before he came to the cross, while he was praying in the garden that night, just before Judas kissed him, he was becoming the sin of the whole world. Your sin, all, all of your sin. And all the sin was placed on him. And he suffered and he was beat down and he was hurt and he was harmed and he fell under the weight of that cross, broke his nose, and he finally got placed on that cross at 9 a.m., and he was on that cross for six hellish hours, receiving the wrath, the punishment, the penalty of God upon him for your sin. And Jesus already suffered. Do you believe that? We encourage you to believe that because that's the only way you're going to be saved. Once saved, always saved, guys. If you're not once saved, always saved, you're not saved. And if you continue to, to combat us in this, you'll be in the tribulation crying like a little girl when you could have been rejoicing with the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. 
And you'll never, ever, ever, if you miss the rapture, because you think you can save yourself, you're going to miss the rapture. You will not be saved. If you think you can lose your salvation, you're going to miss the rapture because you're not saved. And you could have been the bride of Christ. And you will never be the bride of Christ if you refuse that salvation is paid for, God's done all the work, and our job, our duty is to believe in that. And if you believe in that, you'll be made righteous. All right, guys, uh, download the book. She's got the link up here. Bible Codes Unsealed 444. Download that thing. 530 Bible Codes. Get those in your heart. Read your Bible 10 to 20 chapters every day. Get the plain text in your heart. Get these coded text. These wonderful, awesome uh, matrix tables. Get them in your heart, man. And we encourage you to support Sean. Take care of him. He's the man of God. This is his full-time gig. And she's got his link up here, PayPal. Take care of him. Take care of the man of God. Amen? All right. Hey, guys. What we're going to do tonight is very vital to last night's code and the couple codes that we have coming up. But we need to do what we're going to do, and we encourage you to stay along for this whole thing. Open your Bibles to Malachi 1, and we're going to read all four chapters of Malachi. Okay? Boom. Please like and share every one of these nightly Bible studies, guys, because we're about to be raptured, and this will be your testimony. This will be your witness in the end. Because I know a guy, and the other guy, they'll take care of business and get your message out there. Amen? And you'll be soul winning all the way through the tribulation. David says, God bless you, family. God bless you, buddy. Glad to have you with us. All the way from New Zealand, guys. Got people from South Africa and England and New Zealand and Asia. Amen. Glory to God. Good to have everybody with us. And pray for those two witnesses, Sean and his twin. Amen. Uh, the 144,000, pray for them. Pray for all the tribulation saints, people to receive the gospel and get it quickly. So they can follow along and get this word of God in them and they can walk out this Bible code. I wish you would. All right, let's turn to Malachi 1. We want to go over this tonight. Listen very closely, okay? These are very important chapters because this is the end of the Old Testament getting in. And the very first thing we see in Matthew is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Okay, this is 400 years before Jesus was born. 400 years before John the Baptist was born, six months before Jesus was born. Josh says, hey man, witness to a co-worker today. Please pray for him. He genuinely wants to understand. His name's Dylan. That's awesome. Kim says, hey y'all, on the phone, all right? Let's pray for Dylan. Lord, touch Dylan's heart. I pray you'll convict him with your holy fire right now. Amen. Convict him. Don't let him go. Don't let him go, Lord. Make, make his feet hot, his head hot. Don't let him away from your fire, your conviction, your consuming fire. And thank you for Josh giving him this opportunity. And I pray you'll just give him more opportunity to continue this thing and close the deal in belief. And may Dylan believe, Lord. And may he be so convinced you can never unconvince him. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Bless our word tonight. May it be beneficial in the hearts of everyone who hears. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, buddy. Hey, this will be beneficial, guys. Do you do you want the benefit of the word? Do you want to go ahead and go over four chapters of the Bible real quick? Let's do that. Malachi chapter one. This is the last word that God ever gave him. And then he shushed for 400 years. And those 400 years are called the inner testament period between the what they call the Old Testament and the New Testament. We say between the Hebrew and the Aramaic. Amen. Amen. Between Malachi and Matthew. There's a pair of M's for you. You know, 44, you got four. Uh, is it M is the 13th letter. So one plus three is four. And Matthew, 13th letter, one plus three is four. So we got the reminder of Jesus. We got the reminder. We're about to go into the Pentecost season, cl close out this era. We're about to go into the death, burial, and resurrection unto the fourth season. We've got the fourth door. We've got the fourth man in the flame. That's a reminder at the end, and then it's the beginner. Okay, we're going to talk again. Let's, let's get back to that man, that fourth flame, that fourth man in the fire. Let's get back to the, dollar, the, the door. Amen? All right. And during that intertestament period is where we get Hanukkah, and that's where that came from, about 168, 165 B.C., and Hanukkah was there. And it was the time of rededication. And that's when Jesus was impregnated into Mary. Hanukkah is very important to us, the Christian church. Okay? It's not just a Jewish thing in the, oh, those wonderful eight days. It's a, the festival of lights and Jesus is the light of the world. 
and Mary was pregnant at Hanukkah, and he was born nine months later at Tishri. Tishri 1, the Feast of Trumpets. All right, let's go ahead and read this and follow along if you can, okay? The burden, every time a true preacher comes along, he comes with the burden of the Lord. That's the message. You don't play around with the message. You don't, <laughs> let's write in a bunch of jokes here and illustrations. The Lord either gives you a, a message or he doesn't. And if he gives you a true message, it's going to be a burden. It's going to be a weight and it will continue to be a weight until you release that in preaching to the crowd. Okay. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, says God. Yea, you say, well, he loved us? And he says, yeah, was it Esau, Jacob's twin brother? And yet I loved Jacob. Jacob was my choice. Uh, chapter one, Kim, we're doing all four chapters of Malachi. We just started, we're in verse two. Uh, he said, yeah, there were two twins, but I chose you. I chose Jacob. I, I chose Israel. I do love you, man. Don't forget that I love you. Verse three, but I hated Esau. Now, he didn't hate the individual Esau. He hates the nation of Esau, Edom. Okay, this is talking about nations here, Israel and Edom. Okay, because by this time, Esau and Israel had long been dead. Now, God sure hated the ways of Esau. All he lived for was now, 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 give me a bowl of soup and you can have the future. You, you can have my eternity if you'll just give me some soup. And that's the way all of the United Nations, Barack Obama and everybody lives right now. Man, I wish I could go over this verse by verse, but tonight is just a survey. It's very important that we cover these chapters. Verse 3, and I hated Esau, God says, and I laid his mountains. That's why we know it's the nation of. We laid his mountains and his heritage to waste, and we left them for the dragons of the wilderness. And whereas Edom say it, that's Jordan. Jordan is Edom. We are impoverished, but we will return and we'll build the desolate places. That's what they said at 9-11. They tore them down, but we're going to rebuild. Wickedness, that's the spirit of Esau. That's the spirit of the Vatican. That's the spirit of the United Nations. That's Esau. And we're going to rebuild. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I am going to come back and destroy it all. You built your big tower after the twin towers fell? I'm coming to destroy that. You've heard about that flood coming, right? The tsunami? We got to keep going. Oh, I wish I could preach every one of these verses. They shall build, but I'll throw down, and they're going to call on them the border of wickedness and the people against of whom hath uh, the, the Lord has indignation forever and ever and ever. This is the setup. This is between the Old and New Testament. This is the end of the Old Testament, and God is even talking about the wicked of that day and Barack Obama and the people of the tribulation. God hates evil, has always hated evil, man. Verse 5. And your eyes shall see and shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Verse 6, a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If I'm then your father, you guys say father? If I'm your, truly your father, where is my honor? You guys don't do a thing I say. And if I'm your master, where's the fear? You don't fear me. You don't reverence me. You don't act like I'm a cop. All you people, when you see a cop, you slow down and reverence him, don't you? Jesus said, you don't even treat me like that. And I'm with you at all times. And I love you. The cop's just doing his job. It's a paycheck for him. But I love you, man. I'm doing this. I stick with you closer than a brother because I'm your friend. And I love you. And I'm your bridegroom. Verse 6, but you guys don't love me. You don't fear me. Saith the Lord of hosts unto you. O oh, priest, all you religious guys in the pulpits and all you Levites who are so wicked over there in Israel right now. Oh, priest that despise my name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You like that name? You like Yeshua? There's many of folks out there right now who say they're Christian, but they hate the name Jesus. Every Jew I know hates Jesus. They hate that name. JC, says the rabbis. The idol worshiping JC. And the idol worshipers who worship JC is what they say. Lies, 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 deceive, deceive, deceive. The blind leading the blinder. Because they won't study their Bibles. And that's what's happening. Every pastor is blind pretty much in these pulpits today. And the people are even blinder because they won't read their 10 to 20 chapters. They won't even read a chapter. If they get to anything, it might be the daily bread verse. 
you know, and that's, they forget every other day or something, you know. God says, you despise me. You don't care about a thing I say. You don't care about my heart. You don't care about my word. You despise my name. God's name is everything that has to do with him. It starts with his word. Verse 7, you offer polluted bread upon my altar. You take moldy bread. Oh, we can't eat this at the house. Let's take that on down to the Lord. Wherein have we polluted you? In that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. It doesn't matter. It's just an average table. It's an average sacrifice. We don't care if we bring rotten bread and animals that, that are missing eyeballs and have cancer. Why in the world would I want to keep that? Why would I want to give God my best? I'll just keep the crap animals and we'll, we'll offer those to God. The table of the Lord's contemptible. He doesn't mean nothing to us. He's, he's nothing special. But you offer all this garbage. The table of the Lord is contemptible. Verse 8. We're in Malachi 1.8. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is that not evil? They're supposed to have two good eyes. Every part of the animal, the sheep, the goat, is supposed to be perfect without blemish. But you don't care if he's missing an eye. Oh, that's the one we'll sacrifice next week. Is it not evil? And you offer the lame and the sick. Is that not evil? Offer it now. Go ahead and give that, that crap to your governor. You got, you got old Donald Trump. You worship him. He's coming to town. Are you going to offer him? Oh, hey, look. I got the worst of my herd. I'd like to give that to you. Oh, I got some bread for you. I know it's all moldy and crappy and stuff. It's filthy. I dropped it on the ground on the way here. It's filthy, full of dirt and dropped it in a mud puddle and moldy. But this is a gift for you. God says, you ain't going to offer that to Don. Why are you offering it to me? Why are you giving me your sloppy seconds and all your trash? See if he'll accept it, says the Lord of hosts, verse 9. And now I beg you, beseech God that he'll be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. This is Malachi crying out. Come on, man, this is a burden on me. Will you all just believe the Lord finally? Will you hear the preacher and do something about it? Will you be doers of the word, not just hearers only, deceiving your own selves? I'm looking at a bunch of people who are deceived, a bunch of re -rees. And that was a burden on his heart while he was preaching this. He's not going to regard your persons, says the Lord, if you act like this. Verse 10, who is there even among you that shuts the doors for naught? Neither do ye kindle a fire on mine altar for naught. You, you, you're not doing anything for my sake. You're just doing it. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Guys, 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 guys. The pleasure that God has in us is his son, his son's righteousness. That's the pleasure he takes in us. I pray that you'll walk in that. The giving of pleasure back. The, the honoring the Lord with his word. With the first fruits of, of all your heart. The first fruits of your mind. The first fruits of your energy. The first fruits of everything you got. You just give that to the Lord. And in this day and age, it's a free will offering. We give him all we got, 100%. We, we live for eternity. We live for nothing on this earth, okay? The tithe is an Old Testament concept, okay? Because they were earthy. You and I, we give our bodies a living sacrifice. We give God our all, right? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, verse 11, we're in Malachi 1, 11, And from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. I thought he's sitting there talking to Israel. He just said he loves Israel, not Edom, not Esau. But here he's saying, I'm going to turn my heart over to the Gentiles and they're going to praise me. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, all day long. I hope this is your heart, folks. I hope you worship God all day long. From the rising of the sun to going down to the place. In every place, incense shall be offered unto my name, a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord. It's just not among you, the church. It's just not among you, the Jews. All you people who claim to know Jehovah and know Jesus. Mm. And praise God for our group here. Praise God for you. Praise God for everybody who listens. Praise God for that 7,000 who haven't bowed the knee to Baal. Amen. Praise God, they're out there, and we're about to meet them real soon. We got some faithful brothers and sisters out there we're going to meet. There's not too many of them in the light of the whole population of the world, the human population, but there is a remnant called the Christian church who's believers, and of that, there's another remnant of people who walk. They don't just believe. They believe enough to love Jesus back, and he knows it. Clues, guys, love leaves 
clues, you know when somebody loves you or not. Four-year-old, a four-year-old knows if they're loved or not. And a four-year-old will love the unlovable. Forgive them quickly and reach up to them. Papa, Dr alcoholic dads, whore mamas, drug mamas, then babies are faithful until they become resentful. Babies are resilient, man. Jesus Christ has loved us with an everlasting love, and I pray that you're loving him back like that, guys. He continues on. We're in the book of Malachi here, chapter 1. Verse 12, but you have profaned my name. You have profaned everything about me, says the Lord. The table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even the meat, everything you bring is garbage to me. I get your sloppy seconds. Verse 13, you said also, Behold, what weariness, going to church, getting ready, doing Bible study, reading the Bible every day, doing all this Jesus crap is just a wearisome labor thing. It's laborious. That's what they said, verse 13. You've also said, Behold, what a weariness it is, and you have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts, and you brought that which is torn, you're bringing me garbage, and the lame and the sick, thus ye brought an offering. Should I accept this at your hand, saith the Lord? Verse 14. But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and vileth sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing, and brings me the worst one he's got. He's got a great one, a perfect one, one that is suitable for sacrifice, and he's going to bring me the garbage. For I am the great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen, but not you guys. <laughs> Please, guys, fear the Lord. Depart from evil. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Do everything for him, okay? Don't be like the people here of old. Verse, chapter 2, verse 1. And now we're in Malachi. And now, ye, O priest, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart, give glory unto his name, saith the Lord of hosts. I will even curse you, and I'll bring that curse, and I'll curse your blessings. Yea, I'll curse them already, because you do not lay it to heart. Aren't you thankful that he became our curse? Aren't you thankful that he removed everything for us? Aren't you thankful that we live in the New Testament age? Aren't you thankful that we're the bride of Christ, those of us that have believed? And he's removed the curse from us, guys. And these folks are not saved. That's who gets the curse. Those of Laodicea who claim they're of Jesus and they don't love Jesus, they're cursed. They're still in their curse, in their trespasses and sins, man. Verse Three, behold, I'll corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces. I'm going to rub crap in your faces, man. I'm, I'm, you make me sick. Even the dung of your solemn feast. When you go to kill your animals, you cut its throat and it defecates. and You got to cut its guts out and there's all that dung. I'm going to take that and I'm going to rub that in your face. You're going to bring me something with a ripped out eye and a missing ear. You're going to bring me something with a scuffed up hoof. I'll take that dung and I'll rub it right in your face, man. You, you, don't, you think God's just being poetic here, or you think it's something like that's going to happen here shortly? You wait in New York City. All you Jews are going to get killed, and, and you'll end up, when they find your corpses, you're going to have the sewage of the sewers all over you. You just wait. Verse 4, And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, and my covenant might be with Levi. That's all the priests. That's all the guys that should know the Bible, the rabbis and all them. Saith the Lord of hosts, my covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave unto him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. And Levi was. Everybody else served that golden calf while Moses was at top. Levi didn't. Who's on the Lord's side? The Levi stepped over there and said, we are. And then all of a sudden, slowly and surely, they changed their ways and kind of money kind of got a hold of them. Just like the rest of the flock. My covenant was with him of life and peace. He feared my name. Verse 6. The law of truth. We're talking about Levi. The law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity. He did turn many from iniquity through preaching the precepts. Verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord's host. But you are departed out of the way. You've cursed many. You've caused many to stumble along the way. At the law, you have corrupted the covenant of Levi, which is the book of the law, Genesis through Deuteronomy. You've corrupted it. Guys, Christians, do you even know it? 
Do you even know Genesis to Deuteronomy? Or did you fall prey to your stupid pastor saying it's not important? You don't read that crap. Get over here and read Matthew. You're not going to know Jesus unless you know Jehovah. Jesus said, I'm coming in the everything that is Jehovah is me. I and the Father are one. When you're looking at me, you're looking at Jehovah. And people don't know who Jehovah is, and they got this false Jesus up in their memory banks and in their feelers. Oh, Jesus. And they totally have missed Genesis through Deuteronomy, Jesus. Joshua, Jesus. Judges, Jesus. You better get to know Jesus. And he says, you guys have profaned my law, man. You're not even telling the people the right thing. You departed out of the way. You stumbled at the law. You've corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 9. Therefore, because of this, I also have made you contemptible. You, you disgust me. You're going to go ahead and bring disgusting stuff to me? You're going to offer me the sloppiest, the nastiest, the grossest? I'm going to rub dung in your face. I'm going to consider you contemptible, man. Before all the people, according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Oh, he's my friend. We'll, we'll do a little sidebar for him. We'll take care of my friend, wink at my friend, but the rest of y'all, you're going to have to pay, pay your tithes. You're going to have to do your dues. And they made it worse on people, and they were partial in their judgments. Aren't you thankful our God is solid in the Word, and He stands by the Word? That's why we encourage you to know the Word. So you can stand in the Word. You'll stand by the Lord. You'll be in the same yoke with Him, walking the same direction, not opposing Him, not fighting Him. Do you think He was a blemished lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, and He was just gnarled up, and God couldn't find nothing else, so He grabbed a sloppy Jesus and said, you go down there and die for Him? Or do you think He was without blemish, like the Bible says He was? Do you think he was the perfect lamb, spotless lamb? Amen? He's called us unto himself to be the same way because his character is in us, his spirit is in us, and he's wanting to change us into, away from the dung face, crap face, away from sloppy seconds and gnarly last, unto the first, unto the holy, and be sanctified, God in us. Five, you've been partial, or verse 10, you've been partial, verse 10, have we not all one Father? Have not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Guys, you're doing your neighbors wrong by not reading your Bible. You're doing your church people wrong. You're, you're, you are here every night knowing the truth. You are here every night being challenged to read and understand the Bible. The plain text and the coded text, and you are clearly taught the Bible here. In this Bible study, and for you to leave this Bible study and go out and not live it? What does God say about that? You're treacherous. You are a treacherous individual. You're a traitor. You profane the covenant of our fathers, the word of God. Verse 11. Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved. God loves holiness. God loves holiness. He loves perfection. He loves that which is without blemish. That's Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ washed us, made us clean, and made us as though we had never been blemished a day in our life. As though I never had an eye missing. That's the Antichrist. Jesus has taken me from the 666 and brought me to the 777. Amen? Perfect, holy, complete. That's our God. Are you walking that way? Are you walking in the word? Are you walking holy? Are you being holy as he's holy, like he told you to be? I pray that you are. Verse 11, Judah has dealt very treacherously, an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange God. That is pl pledging your allegiance to anything other than Jesus. Could be the flag, patriotism. Could be your TV shows you watch. Could be your hobby. Could be the, your son's football team. Oh, he's a freshman this year and he, he's going to be starting. And you made that your God? Come on, dude. He's going to grow up and be a bald, fat guy like the rest of us. He ain't nothing. Why are you worshiping your kid? Why are you worshiping the gods of your kid? Why have you made your kid a God? Why have you made your children, your grandchildren a God? Why have you put them before the Lord? You're treacherous. You better get back. You better choose you this day, the Lord. Serve him. Serve him with your heart. Serve him with your love. Verse 12, And the Lord will cut off this man that doeth this, and the master and the scholar, 
out of the tabernacle of Jacob. You don't care how good you are and how much Bible you know. If you ain't living it and doing it, he's cutting you off, dude. And that's what's about to happen here. That's what's going to happen here in the East Coast and then for the next seven years throughout the world. We encourage you all to be saved. Have Jesus through, through your faith in him. He'll wash you clean, make you whole as though you've never sinned in your life. He will make you in the eyes of God without blemish. Now walk in that. Walk in that. God loves holiness. Verse 13, And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears and weeping and crying out insomuch that he regardeth not the offering anymore or receiveth it with good will at your hand. Coming to the altar and crying, Oh, Lord God! You know, those Pentecostal churches, those old school Baptist churches, everybody coming to the altar and then getting right up and not even remembering about it. Let's go, hey, Sunday night's pie night. Let's go get some pie and just shove your pie hole full of pie and totally forget what you's crying out there at the altar. God's sick of it. Oh, I watered it. I watered that whole altar with tears and everybody saw me. God was waiting for what happened after church, after that crying, after that bellowing and hollering out. Walk. With integrity, guys. Walk the heart of God. Crying out in so much, he regardeth not the offering anymore, or receiveth it with good will at your hand. Verse 14. We're in Malachi 2, 14. Yet ye say, wherefore? Well, because the Lord hath been witness against you and the wife of your youth. Everybody's watching porn. Everybody's watching soft porn on their movies. You send the kids to bed and let's watch all these other naked people that ain't my spouse. God hates that with a passion, man. And it's epidemic in the church. And a lot of folks are just letting their kids watch it now. Oh, close your eyes and putting little, letting him see right through your fingers. Letting him see that wickedness. God is sick of it, man. He's coming, dude. He's coming. He's coming to kill all these religious folks who aren't saved. Verse 14, and ye say, Wherefore, because the Lord hath been witness against thee and the wife of thy youth, whom thou hast dealt very treacherously, yet she's your companion and the wife of the covenant. You made a covenant with her and a promise, but in your heart, you're lusting after all kinds of stuff. You go to the beach and you can't keep your eyes on your wife. You go to the beach and you got to check out all the hot bods and make a nod. Hey, baby, the nod to the hot bod. The Bible calls this neighing at your neighbor's wife, and he hates that with a passion. You better have a heart that is true. You better have a heart full of integrity. And you better let God know you love the wife of your youth. You better let God know you love him and you're a good wife to him. And you're not choosing all these other little choices around you. But he is your sole love. He's the only one you have. You've made covenant with him. The father and the son made covenant and you have placed your faith in that. And now you are the bride of the bridegroom of heaven. Please be brightly. Now, these chapters we're reading are very vital to last night's Bible codes and the Bible codes ahead. That's why we're covering them. We are in Malachi chapter 2, verse 15. And did he not make you one? When you got married, you became one, one flesh. Why are you all split up? Why are you splintered? Why are you creating treachery against your spouse? Even you women are so satanic at this right now because of television. Years and years and years of television and soap pops and prime time. Let's send those kids to bed and watch Little Sex in the City and watch everybody laugh at that which is not funny to God, which he despises, which he preaches against in his holy word that you don't read. And if you read it, you don't do it. God's calling us to be a people who do what he says to do. Verse 15 that ye might seek a godly seed, that he, he might seek a godly seed. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none of you deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. You get back to having eyes only for your wife, a heart only for your wife, mind for your spouse. You women need to get back to this too now and be holy. Be ye holy in your mind, in your thoughts, in your integrity. God sees that. That's what he's judging, guys, at the judgment seat of Christ. Be holy. Be righteous. Verse 16. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith, he hateth putting away. He hates divorce. God hates divorce. God hates divorce. And in America, you're forced to divorce. If No reason. You, you get those no-fault no divorces. You get a spouse that wants to run off. You get a spouse that wants to run off and commit treachery. You're divorced. And the church will make you suffer for it. 
And God hates that with a passion because he told us way, way back, don't you dare make somebody suffer for the sins of a wife, a husband, the father for the child, the child for the father. Every man shall give an account of himself to God for the things he has done. But the church wants to hurt other people. The church will make somebody feel bad. A poor gal, she's just been faithful, 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 and her husband is a scumbag, treachery, and he leaves his wife for somebody else, and the church looks down on her. Won't let her teach her Sunday school class or children anymore when that was her calling. Stupid fools, God sees all this, man. You better understand when people are one with him in the middle of all the treachery around them. And don't you dare judge somebody for somebody else's sin in their life. Every man's going to give an account, and you continue to walk righteously and holy before God, and he'll honor you big dive, guys. We're about to get to the judgment seat of Christ. You walk holy, and you walk before him in integrity. He knows the facts, and you walk in the facts, Jack. Oh, take heed your spirit, and do not deal treacherously. Verse 17. Oh, you have wearied the Lord with all your big mouth words. Yet you say, what are you talking about? How have we wearied him? When you say, everyone that doeth evil is good. Oh, he's okay. He, he, he's all right. I know he does a bunch of stuff, but he's really a good guy. God hates that with a passion because he already told you in the Bible, there's none that doeth good. No, not one. There's none that seeketh after God. No, not one. And you're calling this guy good? You're calling this evil man who hates God, who's not saved, who watches porn, who lies about everything. You're calling him good? Quit that. God says, you weary me with that crap. Your words is that crap spewing right out of your pie hole. Yet you say, where have we worried him when you say every one that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord? And he delighteth in them. He just loves you. That's, is that not the talk of Laodicea today? That God just loves every sinner that comes along the way they are? He tells you to come to the altar. He tells you to get saved. Guys, sinners aren't allowed in the church in the congregation of the righteous. They're unrighteous. Why in the world would you let somebody who's unrighteous in the congregation of the righteous? They need to get saved. They need to become the church to be invited into the crowd of the church. We got it all backwards here, man. And it's nothing new. This is 400 years before Jesus got here. 2,500 years ago. 2,400 years ago. But you weary the Lord. You're calling everything that is evil good. You're fine with your TV shows. You're fine with your music. You're fine with your sin. You're fine with your laziness. You're fine with your lack of reading the Bible and not caring about the heart of God. You're fine with that. God calls it evil. He hates every bit of it. You're a treacherous wife if you're saved. Quit that. Come back to Jesus. Oh, so where is the God of judgment? He hadn't smashed me yet. He's so merciful and gracious now. Oh, he just, we just get a sin, 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 and God never gets to spank us because we're saved. God told you in Romans chapter 6 that he forbids that kind of thinking in you. That means he forbids it. So you're going against something he forbids when you're calling evil good and you're saying God's cool with your sin because he, he died for it all. And there's grace, grace, grace. He's given you the grace and the freedom to not sin anymore, to choose to quit sinning. You don't have to live in sin. We're going to fall off the truck and sin here and there, but you don't have to live in sin and make it a point to live in sin and have everything that come out of your pie hole be a wearisome word to God, right? Why don't you be holy for he's holy? Chapter three, Malachi three. For behold, I will, this is where we get to Sean. That's where we've been getting to. God's going to send Elijah along. And the other guy, Moses and Elijah, behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way of the Lord. Now we know that John the Baptist did this. He had the spirit of Elijah on him. Sean has the spirit of Elijah on him and he's coming back. God always has this guy, these guys for such a time as this, just before the Lord shows up on the scene. John was there first telling everybody, hey guys, there's a man coming here to town after I leave you. Everybody respected John and loved his word. The commoner did. Th those down there who were of a cult and preaching the wrong stuff hated John, but all the common men loved John and knew that he was a prophet, knew that he was a Levite who knew the word and lived the word and loved God. And when he preached, they listened to what he said. And he said, guys, there's coming a man behind me who's a lot more important than me. You had better hear ye him. 
and he'd go to the next town and he'd prepare the way so everybody would listen to Jesus. That's Sean and the other guy's job. The 144,000, they're going to be pointing to Jesus, pointing to Jesus, Yeshua, their Messiah. Behold, verse chapter 3, verse 1, I'm going to send my messenger and he shall prepare the way of the Lord whom ye seek. Everybody's seeking the, the Messiah, but they won't believe that it's Jesus. He's already come 2,000 years ago, and these Jews will not believe he's their Messiah. We're seeking him, though. We're looking for him. Well, Sean's going to come along and tell them, it's Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified. And suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom ye delight. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 2, but who shall abide? the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth for he is like a refiner's fire this is the second coming of jesus and sean and the other guy will be warning them about this y'all better prepare you better get saved or he's coming to kill you and he will kill you and he's going to clean you up his whole purpose is to do that refiner's fire and a fuller soap verse three and he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. This is Sean's job. He's coming in to teach the Levites, to show them the word, to show them the Bible codes, to get them on track like Paul had to concerning the uh, the law that he already knew, Genesis to Deuteronomy, but he was looking at it all from the wrong direction. And Sean's going to come in here and preach the righteousness of the Lord. Behold, the day of the Lord is going to burn as an oven, man. Y'all better repent and turn to Jesus, okay? Verse 4, we're in Malachi 3, 4. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as the days of old and as the former years. They're going to believe. They're going to believe Sean preaching and the other guy. That's Elijah and Moses. And I will come near unto you in judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. Oh, God hates the pharmacist. He hates witchcraft. He hates witchery. He hates Harry Potter. He hates all the, the witches and warlocks and goblins and wolves that everybody in the Christian church loves. Vampires, are you kidding me? Oh, the church loves them too. And God hates them. And God sends his preachers along like me to tell you, you better quit your sorcery. You better quit playing with the devil. You better quit continuing in your treason against God Almighty, in your selfishness, in your unwillingness to hear his voice and hear his preachers. God's voice is in his preachers who are preaching his truth, his word. You better listen to them. Hear ye him. Amen. And he's coming against the sorcerers and against the adulterers, all you guys that watch porn, all you women that watch porn and this nakedness in your homes. God's sick of it. And against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling and his wages and the widow and the fatherless. God hates oppression of people who are desperately just trying to survive and people come against them. God's going to be their vengeance. And Sean and the other guy and the 144,000 are going to be part of that. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And he's going to use Sean and the other guy breathing fire out of their mouth and killing their enemies for the first three and a half years. And then for the next three and a half years, that'll be, look like a lull. Looks like Satan gets his day. Everybody's getting the mark of the beast, becoming beast, becoming Satan's themselves. And then Jesus shows up and kills them all. And he is his own vengeance. He sent his prophets all day long and you killed them. You wouldn't hear what they say and you killed them. I sent my son and you killed him. Again, I sent my prophets, my glorified ones, and you killed them. And Jesus is going to come back and kill them all, man. And I'll come near to judgment and I'll be a swift witness against all the sorcerers. And he makes that list up there against people who mistreat others, against the stranger, uh, that, that turn aside the stranger from his right. What God said the stranger can have and do, these people said, no, you can't. Ruth, you, you can't abide in this field. When God said she could. What if Boaz said that? But people are going to be saying that. Verse 6, we're in Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, you've gone away from mine ordinances. You won't read my Bible, don't know what I say, don't know what I mean, and have not kept them. Return unto me. Return, and I'll return unto you. That's God's cry right now. Guys, you got few days, few days. We're counting days till Jesus comes and raptures us. Will you lost people just get saved and believe, once saved, always saved? And will you save people get to reading your Bibles and become good disciples of the living God? 
Become a good wife. Become a good bride, please, for your sake. Isn't it just right? It, wouldn't that be what you expect? Your daughter's getting married next month. You don't want her man being a whoremonger, do you? Your son's getting married next month. You don't want your daughter-in-law to be being a slut whore on him, do you? Why are you that to God? Turn and mend your ways. Believe the Lord and straighten up your act, your evil act. God says even Christians are acting evil. They're part of the sorcery and they're part of the mistreatment and they're part of these people. A fleshly Christian is far worse than a sinner. Far worse than a sinner. God's calling you back to him today. will walk holy. Verse 8, will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. But they say, oh, what are you talking about, God? We've never robbed you. He says, well, in tithes and offerings. And that was all about bringing the first fruits of their crops and their animals to God so the priest down there could eat. You're starving my priest to death by not giving them the food that's required. And that's what he was telling him. The, the Old Testament requires a tithe. The New Testament is a sacrificial offering. You just give of your free will and the Lord marks it. Okay, and the requirement in that, though, what makes a free will legitimate before the Lord right now in the church age is a rejoicing heart. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, a hilarious giver. And if you can't give with hilarity, don't give. It's a it's a wasted gift. OK, God will use somebody else. And so he says, God says, you rob me, you rob me, you rob me. Verse 9, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. Even the whole nation has robbed me. And that's so true of Israel right now. They claim they live in the law, but they hate God. They hate Jesus. They hate Jehovah. They hate yod heh vav -Heh. And they have followed a demon named Hashem, the name. And they follow it after Kabbalah and everything else wicked and wrong and opposing God's word. He says, man... Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. There may be enough to eat my house, um, meet in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and I'll bless you, man. I'll pour out a blessing. And that means Pentecost. Pentecost, Pentecost, Pentecost is the time when God opens up the windows and pours out blessings. And that's the whole picture. It was culminated in the Holy Spirit of God coming through that window of blessing and blessing every believer, man, with cloven tongues of fire dancing across their heads, speaking in tongues, being witnesses, martyrs. You shall be martyrs unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the world. And they were willing to do that, and they did that. He said, you just test me, man. See if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And if there's not room enough to receive it, you ain't going to have enough room to receive what I got for you. Remember the story of Elisha and the oil that kept pouring, 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 pouring. It kept pouring as long as they had containers, it was going to pour. And when they ran out of containers, it stopped pouring. Amen. Verse 11, we are in Malachi 3.11. And I will rebuke the devourer, Satan. I want to re rebuke Satan for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast forth her fruit before the time of the field, because we're not going to allow storms to come in, God says. We're going to pre preserve your fruit. And that's, this is the promise of the people in the tribulation. Okay? Uh, for the time of the fruit, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 12. And all the nations shall call you blessed. Especially during the millennium. Once Jesus has made it here. They've called unto the Lord. They've started following the Lord and believing Him and live, living for Him. He, Jesus is their Messiah, and the whole world will see the blessings of Israel. Amen. Say it, the Lord of hosts, and you shall be a delightsome. Right now, everybody, everybody hates Israel. Israel is hated by everybody. But then when Jesus comes back, there will be no wicked people left to hate Him, and everybody's going to love Him because they're going to love their King Jesus. Verse 13, your words have been stout against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what are you talking about? What have we spoken against you? Verse 14, you have said, it, it's vain to serve God, man. What profit is there if we keep the ordinances and all that we have uh, walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts, mourning and being sorrowful and really believing this crap? Verse 15, and now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness, the gay is proud. The gay is pride. We call them happy. Look, they look like they're festive. They look joyful. Oh, look how much fun they're having. They're happy. We call the proud happy. 
God knows better. He sees their filthy hearts. He sees them having to go back to their apartments afterwards and having to eat a bunch of pills and drink booze and smoke weed so their thoughts don't haunt them and their consciences are seared. They call the proud happy, yay. They that work wickedness are set up. They got it going. I mean, you go down to Key West, the fags own everything, and they are millionaires. You go to California, same way, to Florida. You go up there to New Jersey and New York, and all the fags, man, they're the blessed ones. All the sinners, they're the blessed ones. God says, you just wait. I've called them a curse. Don't you call a blessing what I've called a curse. And don't you call a curse what I've called a blessing. That's why it's important to know God's word and what he's calling what. Who he's calling who. They call the proud happy, yea, and they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Look at all this stuff going on around the world. Look at this stuff at the Olympics. They're all having a heyday, and we're the little guy. We're the picked on. We're about to be raptured, and it ain't going to matter nothing. We're going to walk holy right now before God, ain't we? Amen. Verse 16, Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another. Guys, this is how you know if somebody fears God. And to what degree they fear him. We're not talking about saved and lost. Most people who are saved don't talk about God. They don't care about God. They're, they're on the worldly side, okay? Let's just get that out there. They're still going to heaven, but they don't fear God. But they that fear God love God. They read his word. They care about him. They want him to be number one. What that means is not scared of God. It means they hold him highest in the holiest of reverence. He's number one. He's preeminent. There's nobody better. There's nobody that's ever treated me so good and forgiven me so much and has loved me continually and will never leave me nor forsake me. I love our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Then they that fear the Lord, they speak often. They can't change the subject. Jesus is that subject and they just can't change it. They got to keep talking about him all the time. That's what they share on their Facebook, on their platforms. Then they that reverenced the Lord and loved him spake often one to another, and the Lord heard it. He, he hears his name. He hears Jehovah. He hears Jesus. And a book of remembrance was pulled forward. God calls an angel. Hey, 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 come here, come here. They're talking about us. Get down there and record everything because we're going to give them rewards for everything they talk about tonight. And boy, just why don't you keep that church service going a little longer? Just get more rewards, okay? They that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened. What? I heard my name. And he sends an angel down recording every deed, every word that's said out of a pure heart. Book of Remembrance. Have a big book up there, will you? We're about to go see the Lord. Why don't you make the rest of these days just rememberable for the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, verse, middle of verse 16. We're in Malachi 3, 16. And the Lord hearkened it and... He wrote a book of remembrance written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. He writes down your thoughts. Why don't you get into the habit of making God your thoughts? Everything you think, everything you do, everything you sing, everything you say, because there's a book of remembrance. You were told this 400 years before Jesus showed up on the scene. 2,400 years we've had this truth, church. And the problem is the church doesn't read the truth. That's why we encourage you to read it and to follow along and believe it. Verse 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. And that day I make up my jewels, and I will spare them. That's the rapture. It's, it's the rapture. We're his children by then. And then he'll spare those after the rapture who believe in him, and he'll place them in hiding. Okay? All those people who talk about me and love me, and he said, I'm going to spare them, man, in the day of trouble. Uh, when I make up my jewels, I'm going to spare them as a man would spare his own son that serves him. Verse 18, and ye shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth not God. Oh, God's called us to judge, huh? Hmm, interesting. Chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Tribulation. You and I, it's at the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible is the fire. And every minute, every nanosecond that we lived is going to go through the Bible. And if we have lived according to the Bible, it'll come out as a reward at the end. If it was all garbage and trash and worldly and sports and entertainment and fleshly and food and, and travel channel and trash coming out garbage because we're going to be judged according to this book. That's why we tell you to read your book and judge yourself lest you be judged. But this day of, of the oven's coming, man, and all the proud and they that do wickedly shall be stubble in the tribulation. And the day cometh shall burn them, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave neither Root and a branch. You see, our root is Jesus. 
Our branch is Jesus, and he's grafted us into him. We're always going to be preserved forever and ever. He's going to rapture us before this fire on earth comes. Amen? But those who aren't rooted into Jesus, even by the time he comes back seven years later, and that's going to be the massive population, they're still going to have their root in Sodom. They're going to have their root in Egypt. They're going to have their root in Babylon. And God's going to come to kill them. He's going to burn the root and the fruit, man, because there was no fruit. It was rotten. But ye that fear the name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in that day that I do this, say, as, says the Lord of hosts, when I judge them, when Jesus comes back the last day of the seven year tribulation. Verse 4, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto them in Horeb uh, in all of Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah. This is vital that we're reading this. I'll send you Elijah, Sean and the other guy, the prophet before the coming and great dreadful day of the Lord because I love you and I want to warn you that I'm coming. And I'm not coming to be nice like I was the first time. I'm coming to kill you. I'm coming to destroy everything in my path that has rebelled against me. And I'm sending Sean and the other guy to warn you. Elijah, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Verse 6, here's the good part. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. That's some pretty interesting stuff right there. That goes right along with the Bible codes we've been looking at here the last couple of days. Come on, man. I want us to look at a note here. This is very vital. Because what we just read, chapter 1, is the 926th chapter in the Bible. Chapter 2 is the 927th. Chapter 3 is 928. You remember going over that Bible code, those Bible codes last night, last couple days? And then tomorrow we'll begin with the fourth chapter, 929. Jesus' birthday. And what's the very next chapter in the Bible? Jesus' birthday and lineage. These numbers that God gave Sean aren't willy-nilly, and they're not trash, and they're not garbage, and they're not, oh, come on, that's a bunch of BS. It's none of that. It's none of that. 926. What was special about 926? Two years ago, Jupiter made its closest appearance to earth that it's made in 59 years. And then he started heading on his way out. Jupiter's Jesus, the striped planet, the one with a pierced side and the stripes on him. That's Jesus, the crucified one. Venus is the glorified one along with the body of Christ. Venus is the glorified Jesus and the glorified body. All of us were represented in that, the church. Jupiter came by 59 years ago plus two. That's 61. That's the year Obama was born in 61. And Jupiter came here making a face-off with Earth and all the Earthlings and all the Earth lovers. He said, I'm coming to kill you because Jupiter is our protector. Jupiter takes all the asteroid hits and protects us from the asteroids. It protects us. It's our guardian for Earth. And our guardian came by and said, I'm going to let down the guard. I'm going to kill you. I'm coming to kill you. I'm going to bring... Nibiru next time. and He'll be a whole lot closer than I am. And Jupiter slowly started making its way out of here. That happened on 926 of 2022. 927, Hebrews 927. It's appointed unto men once to die. And after that, the judgment. God's coming with judgment. He's coming with rapture. He's coming with a warning. And we have that in these numbers that God has given Sean. 926, 927, 928, Hebrews 928. I'm coming the second time for those that are looking for me. Now, that's the second coming, okay? The rapture is going to rapture people who aren't looking for him, who all who are saved. He's going to come get them. But it's a reminder. I'm coming for those that are looking for me. That includes me. I'm looking for Jesus to come now, and there's great reward in his hand. Because what? How do I know that? Because I read the 926th chapter of the Bible. I read the 927th chapter of the Bible. I read the 928th chapter of the Bible, and they told me all of that. He's going to make me like crowns in his jewels, those that are looking for him. The others are going to miss out on their rewards. 
He's going to save them. He's going to rapture us away. But he's talking about crowns and jewels right now. Rewards. Jewels in the crowns. And then 929. We'll pick up and we'll cover that 929. I was hoping to get to it tonight. But we'll start with that one tomorrow night. God's numbers aren't willy-nilly, folks. And his birthday is 929. Jesus, we have just found this out. In all the puzzle pieces and all the riddles and all the parables and all the Bible codes. And Sean would write, I really don't understand what all this means now, but we will as we continue to go. That was two years ago he said that. And here we are two years later and we know a whole lot more than we did then. And we got a whole lot more puzzle pieces put together. Amen. Amen. Amazing book. Thank you, brother. Amen. Wow, wow, says Heather. Oh, my, says Kim. Take us home, Jesus. Take me home. Take me home. Take me home tonight. Hey, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. We love your word. We love your numbers. We love your man. Thank you for choosing this Elijah in our lives and identifying him for us. Thank you for always sending a man along before you show up on the scene to get everybody's attention, to be looking for you, to notice you. And I pray for Sean. I pray for the other guy. that They'll be readied and they'll be protected even now. We know the devil's coming. He wants to devour them, destroy them before they're born into their glorified bodies. Thank you for saving us from the devourer. You just now promised that the, the devourer would not get us. We're walking with you. Hallelujah. Being saved and walking in that salvation, Lord. I thank you for everybody here. I pray that you'll make us people who are stoked for you, on fire for you, who have hearts of oneness with you, hearts without treachery, without treason, without having two faces. They can have that, Lord. We want you. We want everything about you, all of you. And I pray for blessings all over these people. I pray special blessings over these who believe. And we bless you. By your grace and glory, we'll see you soon. And we'll see all these people together. I cannot wait for that, Lord. I cannot wait for that. And we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, Amen guys. I love you. You guys remember going over the 928 last night, right? That's Lindy's number a couple times. That's her number a couple times. It's my number. 928 is my number, too. Amen. And God speaks to us. Let him speak to you. 929, dude. Jesus' birthday, and the last chapter of the Old Testament. Read it again. He's coming to burn you as an oven. If you're not saved. If you've not repented in the first three and a half years, most likely you won't. He's coming to kill you. We encourage you to repent and turn to Jesus. Carlos says, Amen, man. Adrian, Sister Adrian says, Amen. Brother David, Amen. Josh, Amen. Sister Aaron, Amen. I say amen, guys. I love you. And by his grace, we'll see you at 726 tomorrow evening. Sister Catherine's here. She says amen. God bless you all. We'll see you then. Walk holy. Walk in the word. Know that word. Be faithful to that word. Tyvon says amen. Walk after the spirit daily. Keep on serving God. These live streams are encouraging. And that's what they're meant to be. And they're meant to be convicting to people who aren't walking. You get to walk in and be comforted by the word every night. God bless 726 by his grace tomorrow night.